Oz. We started infrared because we call, we call for a new beginning for Marxism-Leninism in the West. The Western derangement that has given rise to the beginning for Marxism-Leninism of this pure nothingness, this nihil, this negation of all society and the world, either because you think it's an unjust or inconsistent or whatever, this negative stance of modernistic abstractionism is a false beginning. I call for a new beginning. A new beginning of Marxism-Leninism that learns from the insights of the Chinese and the Russians and the non-Western Marxist-Leninists that allow them to derive the adobe, the clay out of which their Marxist-Leninist ideology is molded, not from an anarchist position of ultra-liberal negation, but from some substantive, particular, civilizational humanity. I am not here to replace the libidinal fantasies and enjoyments of mass culture with libidinal fantasies of the enjoyment of great civilizations. We should revere and respect our deeper civilizational reality as something phenomenally remote from us rather than proximate. Our civilization is not something we can consume. It is our sublime reality in the face of which we can only carefully, cautiously, but soberly distill into the concrete form of a people's consciousness. The premise of Marxist-Leninist the world over is not the anarchistic abolition of everything. The premise is the determinate, deep, telluric realities of the people, of your people, of the people in the country within which you were born, which you serve, which you've inherited, and of which you belong as a part of a greater whole. We have nothing in common with anarchists, nothing. Our anti-capitalism has nothing in common. We oppose capitalism because capitalism is anarchist. We don't oppose capitalism because we're gonna just artificially contrive our own society from scratch. We oppose capitalism because the very reality of history, the very reality of the winds of history, of the forces of production, and of the people have outmoded it fundamentally and on a scientific level. That is our stance as Marxist-Leninists in the West. But these Baiswold tankies who are abusing and misusing the legacy of Marxism-Leninism are trying to turn Marxism-Leninism into anarchism with some extra steps. No, no. Marxism and anarchism are qualitatively distinct. As Stalin put it in his own words, anarchism is our enemy. It is the enemy of the working class. We don't share similar principles with anarchists. We don't share the same end goal as anarchists, but with different steps and with different forms. There is a qualitative difference between us. We are human. We believe in humanity. We don't believe in nothingness. We don't believe in nothing. We don't believe in nihil. We believe there's something at the end of the tunnel. We believe there's something there. Even when it seems like capitalism has negated our entire reality, something still survives. Something is still there. We want to heed the call of that something that's still there. That's the beating heart of the people. That's what we as Marxist-Leninists represent. The beating heart of humanity. The beating heart of our countries, of our civilizations, of our peoples. That's what we represent. We don't represent nothingness. We don't represent negation. We don't represent abolition of everything. We represent not the abolition, but the affirmation of the people. We don't represent the abolition of history and of civilization, but the affirmation of true civilization. We don't represent the abolition of order, but the emergence, consolidation, and might of the true, real, and material order of humanity. That's what we represent. That's the meaning of gorillas and sons.